Hey you guys, Fastest Pastor here. I have the pleasure of bringing to you today the commentary on qualifying day race crash I had. And before I start this, I just want to preface this by I really appreciate Pikes Peak allowing me to do this. I know it was a little bit of a hard sell for them because they don't want to have the image that they enjoy crash. In fact, I know they don't enjoy crashing. They don't enjoy some of the, the past uh, crashes and deaths that they have had. They really are about the safety of a racer, having a safe, clean event. Um, but I told them, I said, I think it's important, and they agreed for us to tell not only the success stories, but time, sometimes the failures such as I've had, especially in my case. Uh, last year, crashed due to road debris. This year, crashed because driver error. And so we're going to be talking about that. Um, this wasn't my finest moment and decision making but we're going to go through it and check out the video so let's start that and dive right into it right now so in the beginning here uh, what we'd already done we already ran we were second quickest and we weren't really pushing bernice that hard maybe 60 to 70 percent and andy got on the radio said hey we're good what do you want to do and i'm like i would like to go back out and work on my corners i really need to work on radius and corners and the acceleration points and he says that'd be great he says if you could work on working through red line on shift that would be great so you'll notice me on and off the throttle quite a bit this time. Um, just trying to set up. My point was to get things markered and pointed out right in Bernice before we laid down the qualifying run the next time. Because I did. I wanted to lay down a qualifying run at about 90%. So off we go. This is the most exciting part. When you see that start, start banner and you're coming through and you're getting ready to take your series of right turns, it's such a beautiful opening to see the summit. We're coming through, hauling the mail, and you're coming through, it's, it's, it's just a really cool place to come through um, where we're working towards the Crystal Work Road. And that's just the one where you see the guardrail. So we've got another left here, and you're gonna see these long sweeping rights, which if you set it up right, you don't have to do too much wheel input the first and second time. And so we come through and then there's a series of uh, left, right, left, right, left, right. And you're gonna see us work through that. And they tighten through these series, but they're fun. And again, you get to see this beautiful view at Pikes Peak. And you can kind of hear me, I'm just working on things, I'm moving my head around, I'm making sure I'm miss, me, meeting my points where I want to, that, okay, this is where I need to start turning, this is where I want my apex. Hey, I wanna make this apex a little different. And so just trying some different things. Again, hoping to do what we can. My point in this, really, I wasn't pushing Bernice that hard, um, was to just get better and get ready for that qualifying run. Just Jeff Sport had really taught me build up to it, build up to it, and that was the point here. I love this section here um, because we're sweeping towards uh, the engineering corner, which is a really tight corner left hand. A lot of people have gone off of it. I finally radiced it the way I wanted to, and I got on the gas a lot harder, which is why you see me spinning. And it was, I was just so anxious. I flew through that corner. I was like, that was some good speed. Got on the gas a lot harder, a lot quicker. This car does not have traction control. And so all that power you have to manage. Now I'm hauling the mail down through halfway picnic grounds. This is my favorite place. I'm on the gas. You'll notice I get off earlier than I normally do. At this point, we were five seconds faster than anybody. I didn't know that until later. I was just feeling good about the car and just trying to set things out. And so really felt like Bernice and I had a lot more to offer Pikes Peak than what we already did in this run. And now you'll see us start to climb up. You know, we've made it through Engineer's Corner, with Gaylor Straits. This is another just little fun area here. Again, some left-right sweepers that we're going to be going through. There, there's some tight rights here, don't get me wrong. Um, where we tighten in like this and we're coming back out. And I just really felt like that was a good line there. I felt like that was a good line, the right apex. This was feeling good that this was the way to set a run up before qualifying. Um, and then now all of a sudden my mind is, is starting to sweep towards, okay, I've got a long run here coming up after this next series that I want to start thinking about. I'm thinking about how quick do I want to get on the gas. So you're going to see us go right and then we're going to come to the left and then we're going to sweep to the right. And that's really, I take my long run before Ski Lodge. And this is where I'm like, okay, I like that apex. I'm going to go here. I'm hauling the mail up through. Not getting after as hard as I normally would, but again, here comes the ski lodge. I love this corner. I just needed to be a little bit more patient on it, and I felt like I was, but I wasn't. And so I had to pinch this corner in a little bit more, but I got back on it, and Bernice did well. I was able to make that time back up. And now my turn here is I'm thinking about sump. I know, I know there's, I think it's called Rookie's Corner. It's a tighter right than what it normally is, and then you're off to sump. 
and here I'm already starting to think about something. I think I can extend that corner out. I think my first mark's the crotch of the trees and then the boulder. I think I can wait for the boulder. And so you see me, my head's locked right, and then I, I'm starting to realize it was a bad mistake. Off of the road I go. First impact, such a hard impact. That second impact I had actually when I hit. So I endo, hit, endo, hit again and again. I remember just thinking to myself, oh, this hurts. And I just remember thinking, dear Lord, make sure this doesn't last long. And it was such a hard feeling knowing where I was at. So you'll see me. I'm going to stop for a second, take one more deep breath. I take that breath, unlock, and I go. But the point here is you're seeing steam roll in. I was always taught where there's steam, there could be smoke. You need to get your butt moving. So that's what we're doing right here is trying to get out of the car. Um, a lot of pain. I will say that there was a lot of pain. So we're going to see another angle here where we kind of go through it again. And here you can see the speeds we were carrying. Again, not pushing it really hard, but just a stupid mistake here. Normally at that corner, I like to keep it right around 80 miles an hour. I thought I could get two more car lengths out of it, and I couldn't. And we just see Bernice get beat up here, which breaks my heart. She really was a good car. I will say, bar none, the safety that Kelly Moss and Porsche have in their cars is phenomenal. So here I am, stretching out the corner. I'm getting to a point where like, yeah, I can do it, I can do it. I'm gonna start stretching that corner out. And you'll see my head, I start turning to the right. I'm not even looking for my first marker, I'm on the second. Now I realize I'm in trouble, you see me straighten the wheel. Hit. I can't even describe to you that first hit, but I'm gonna tell you right now, saw belt, their belts are amazing. I didn't have one belt bruise anywhere. You're going to see this view, the 360 really shows it, how quick it happened. I was airborne for 1.9 seconds approximately, and then I hit. So air, hit, you see how quickly that car just tumbles. And then my dreams, just a horrible mistake on my end. I knew I was at sump. I knew what I wanted to do, just that there's a little like straight leg in it, and I thought, as the more I thought about it, in my mind, I made it longer. But you can see, I'm gonna start looking right, and you see me locked on right, and I realize I can't make it, I come back straight, and that hit, look at that air. Oh, man. And then finally, there I am. I'm doing a no-no, you don't hold on to your steering wheel in the crash like that, I was not very smart. I really thought I'd at least move one hand off. But here I'm trying to make sure the door opens, I'm good. You'll see me just pause for a second. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna breathe. I'm gonna breathe, okay, I'm still feeling good. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's get the net off. And then, oh, I forgot about my mic line, which actually happens even when I'm getting out of the car on normal. I think it drives Jameson nuts. And then you see me disappear, and the last thing you see is the cross on my suit. The race crew was phenomenal. They were bar none. You know, this was a mistake in which I was warned I would make. Both Jeff Swart and Reese Millen talked about not changing your marks while you're hot. Jeff said, he's like, Don, you know the hill well enough that you'll be apt to make a mistake. And I really thought I could stretch that corner. I never, I never felt like I was fast enough on sump. And I'm like, I think I can stretch it out a couple car lengths. And by the time you realize um, it's a mistake, it's too late. And I ended up where I ended up. I didn't go as far airborne, I went higher, I believe, than, than uh, Randy, but I think he still has the mark for going the furthest. So uh, maybe not as spectacular as mine, um, but it really, it's just amazing. And so uh, our meters are six Gs each way. They were, they were pegged out. Safety crew got there right away. They were amazing. Um, I was just super happy to see Randy rule. I just really like that guy. Him and Dan and, and the rest of the Pikes Peak are like family to me. But the safety crew did phenomenal, the doctor did phenomenal, every day did well, the ambulance drivers. And I can't thank everybody enough, but my crew really is the best group out there. And I feel horrible um, that I wrecked Bernice. This is the first race car I've ever totaled. And it's heartbreaking for me. Bernice, it's weird, I've never felt this way about a car and my team worked so hard. We had so much adversity the whole weeks before, as you guys know, we had a blown motor, we had some other issues, and we got everything together and we were running so good. And uh, we're gonna be back next year. That's, that's our plan. And I'm almost pretty much healed up. Um, I've still got some bulging in my discs, but we're working on that. 
and so I'm thankful. So make sure you subscribe, like, and follow not only Pike's Peak here at this YouTube, but head on over to Fastest Pastor on our YouTube. We've got a bunch of videos, and next week we're going to release the full 360 interactive video of the crash footage. So listen, I appreciate everybody's prayers, your support, and your thoughts. God bless you guys. Love you guys, and be safe.